the concept of Achillimu, the fertilizer recommendation, that is a part that we will see. And just like other other fertilizer recommendation prediction engines out there, um, there are the, the 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 primary data input that 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 we are using, right? Anything that we can sort to just just data that we can source. Uh, within the partners operation area and, and, and the field trials, right? So if I um, go to here and show you how the, the script is built for Akilimo. So first I want to give you like the, 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 the highlight of the logic that I put together. And then we will go into each function as time allows from here until we are done with it, right? So <clears throat> here we have all the modules that we need for 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 Achillimo, and it is not ordered uh, in in sequentially in in the way we we execute it. Um, but the first thing we will do is uh, defining the the area of interest, and for that as well. Um, we do have we do have a script. So if we see it in in running, there is for there will be like a preliminary kind of a general general um, documentation. There is no much to tell, but this one will give will create the GPS reading readings at five kilometer resolution for an area. So say we are moving to Uganda, we don't have a Uganda version for Akilimo, the first thing we do is which area are you working? And after that, we will create a regular grid. This the, the script here is working at five kilometer. Why five kilometer? Because the rainfall data that we are getting is at five kilometer resolution. So we go by that and say, but you can go, you can you can update it and, and go at any resolution you want, right? So at five kilometer resolution, we create a grid system for the whole partner's area. And that is based on these GPS readings that we will source the soil, the weather, whatever, whatever, and all the spatial computation after that will be uh, are, are executed based on this grid system. So at the end of the day, when you have a recommendation as well, we will you will have one value for five by five kilometer space. It is it is that level of specification that, that we can go. And given the soil data anyway, uh, the digital soil, what that the value that we get from the digital soil maps, uh, they are very much smoothened uh, and uh, the variation in the soil property that we see in, in even third, like 10, 15, 20 kilometers is not substantial. So whether we go with 250 meters resolution of soil data or a five kilometer resolution soil data, the, the benefit that we will win is or the kind of local variability that we can capture is so minimum when you put it against the, the, the amount of computation that you multiplied by going from five kilometer by to 250 meters, the trade-off is like hugely balanced to rather let me run it at five kilometer. So um, that is why five kilometer. And when you see that the way it is uh, put together, there is there are two functions in here. There is a region for area of interest and the GPS for area of interest. First, you need to define in which region and that region, depending on the GIS, the shape file of the country that you pick, Sometimes they call it level one, level two, sometimes call it name one, name two. Maybe you want to work at level three, not at, at, at level one. This level one, level two thing is, I am referring to, is it a state, district, region, zone, whatever, you know, like that, the, the, the area of interest that your partners are working with, um, how you define. Open. Oh, don't have internet. What happened? Hmm. No, I have internet. I'm uh, still connected. We lost, we lost you for a few seconds. Do you hear me? 
Yeah, now we hear you, Meklet. I Hello? thought it was my headphones, but now we my hear head. you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, now I am back. I don't know. The, the network dropped out. How long did I go? It did. It did for just a few seconds, but but um, ah, okay. yeah. Ah, okay, okay. That's good. Uh, I don't know what why 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 it does. Hello. What is this? What is happening? Hey, can we hello? blame it on the Russians? Maybe. Am I out again? No, you're here. Yeah, I mean we yeah, can hear you can, and we can see your page. There it is, back again. Yeah. It have, yeah. But when I open it, it is like it flips. Yeah, anyway. So when you open the um, R script themselves, I, I tried to put uh, a documentation and an example. You can you can source that code and you can run write around the example and you will see. So if you want to see it in action, so there are two things, as I said, right? First, we need to define the region. And for the region, all these uh, scripts, by the way, they are implemented at this point in Akilimo server. So the shape files we do have in Akilimo server, uh, the soil data from ISRIC as much as possible, from ISDA as well, uh, the rainfall data from 1985, I guess, up to 2020, maybe not complete for, 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 from chirps, they are all there. Why do I have it there? You, we can inv Part of the data for ISRI, you know, ISDA is coming via API, but why I do put it there is it is a lot faster when, when, <laughs> when I have it sourced, for instance, with API from ISDA, it is GPS by GPS, you fire a request and you collect the data, then that, that, that I didn't want. I want to submit the whole, for instance, for Nigeria, I have plus 12,000 uh, GPS points and I just fire it at one and get it all. And that I can do when I have the layers uh, in my server. So given a storage space for this data is not really huge, I would also advise, that's also what we discussed with Eduardo and Siabusa as well, that within CG Labs it is better to create a space and all those things that we repeatedly source are put there and our, our scripts can be optimized. So, I will I will jump here and there just to give the general feel, but uh, I will try to follow as well uh, strictly. Can I, Meklet, can I ask a question to follow up on what you just said? Uh, we've Anytime, been we've been interrupt me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, but but uh, just to just to ask quickly if these these things that you you have loaded here right now that are uh, are they are they part of the data catalog, Eduardo? That's uh, you and Ani have been working on for CG Labs. If not, sh they should be prioritized. Yeah, so so definitely whatever is uh, sourced for Aquilimo will be part of the catalog. So okay, so we should we should explicitly put that into the work plan probably for SIO. Yes. So it doesn't yes, get dropped. Okay. There are a couple of components that, for example, uh, not, yeah, but Meklit will go through it, so I don't want yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah, but just yeah, wanted to, defi yeah. definitely whatever is in in Aquilimo and can be actually collected into as uh, into a storage will be done. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, um, Eduardo has uh, access to access to this thing, so so we do have here uh, GIS data. So all the country shape files that we have are here. Uh, if need be, if if I I only coded for the countries that we work like you see it here Tanzania Nigeria maybe I will I will uh, increase the font uh, if it is too small maybe fourteen even would work a bit more yeah okay so like Tanzania Nigeria and stuff like that again yeah, so the countries are listed here the ones that were interest of interest of Akilimo so if someone want to in, in, uh, expand on that one it is just in the country shape files we need to add those things the ISDA soil layers are are here the ISRIC 250 are here the rainfall data are here so they are all there it's just copying this whole folder into into CG Labs and you have it there and then you just you just change the, the, the path to source it. 
So if all it takes is run this function, and then, uh, for instance, run that one, the example. So the example sources that function, and it gives you the, maybe I'll just show the, the head of what we get. This is this is what we want. This is for Ethiopia, in country Ethiopia is defined here. For level one in, in Afar region of whatever, the region that they have for Tigray, for instance, these are the, the three second level division, uh, administrative divisions within 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 Tigray. So when, when, when a new country is asked, you run this one for that country, you define on which level are you interested in, it runs it, you get that data and you define, okay, from here on, I'm only interested in Ethiopia and Tigray region, you subset it and you go. Once you know that part, the next part is creating that, that regular grid for your area of interest. And that one is with this GPS for area of interest. So this region for area of interest and GPS for area of interest, those are what we have here, right? <coughs> you already saw it here. Uh, define area of interest. So these are the two R functions that I'm running now. And both of them, they do have a oxygen here that tells you what every func of every argument, the list of label, what is that that argument should represent or what value can it assume. Um, if you want the whole the whole country, you leave it all. If not, within, for instance, Ethiopia, if it is it, if it was only Tigray, then you define here Tigray. That's it. You give your country name, you give your server type. In Akirimu, we do have a production and, and, and a development server. And as long as we are we are testing out, we work on, on on development servers. That's why it is put there. But I think for storage to store the 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 the, 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 GP, the digital files, the shape files and the stuff, we don't need we don't need to duplicate it into two servers. That could have been done. It is just a bit uh, not being very careful. So anyway, you do that. You run this function now as well. And then after that, you can just call it. You call it. You give the. You give. You define the values for your argument. You run it, and then if you see the output, in this case, I just used Ghana. It it doesn't matter. From Ghana, I say it for the whole the whole region in Ghana. Create me create me a, a regular grid, and this is what I get, the longitude, the latitude, the administration name, label one, and label two, the, the deeper label, the location is just a concatenation. So this is this is the first the first step that, that we do when we go into a new country. So I guess this is pretty straightforward, right? If there is any question, please just go ahead and ask anytime. <laughs> Um, so we define our our regular grid we have. The next step is going and sourcing the soil data, the rainfall data, the NASA data, and so that is what, what, what we need to do. So for instance, if we look into the Akilimo soils, here there is a general um, the general recommend uh, what is that the, the, gen the general documentation where the ISDA layers are downloaded from, what the ISDA layer, you can go by API, uh, it has two depths and stuff like that. Um, so for the whole GPS coordinates, the way it, it is working is both um, ISDA and, and, and ISRIC data, they come layer by layer. Uh, the CEC, the um, total nitrogen, the soil organic carbon, they come from layer by layer, so it is layer by layer. But when we when we source the data from one layer, it is as a vector, it is it gets in, so it is at once for the whole the whole variable, the for the whole list of GPS that it picks once, as 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 I said. Um, and then for the soil data, we need the soil hydraulics, like the wilting point, um, field saturation, and the hydraulics data. The, 
fill the capacity. These three variables are required to run DSAT as well as as well as uh, lean tool. To, uh, when when we are going to the, for for the potential for the water limited yield, we do need those functions. And at this point, it is the script that takes care of it that based on the soil texture and the pH and stuff like that. No, no pH. Probably it is the soil organic carbon and and, and the soil texture. It calculates those those parameters and it is harvest choice uh, pedotransfer function that we are we are using. So this is the general one. And when you go into the scriptus, there is the get is that data and they, there is a get isric data. And for the get isric data, mostly last time we discussed with Eduardo as well that ideally what we will have is we will have one working function and one one script, one R script where uh, whoever is running the script will just keep on building on that one, right? Like uh, where there is a new region, it defines it. It is it is not not really strictly structured kind of a script and all the functions that we source that should be within the function and that is not something that we will we will touch once we optimize it and so on it will be put there and and we only just we, we just call it for so for the isda it is done like that but when you go there anyway for any one of them as i said still there will be an an air oxygen with uh, with some with some example so if you if we want to see it um if you want to see it the the data sourcing for instance for uh, get isric data as you see it here it is sourcing it is reading the the got files for clay, for CC, for la la la, that this is what I mean. Every time from every layer independently, it is sourcing. When you scroll down after you get all of it, you will get the pedo transfer functions that I was talking about, the soil, soil organic uh, matter and soil texture mainly it is using. It calculates the stains and it returns a flat file for by by GPS all the soil properties listed in different columns. So this will be a standard thing. Uh, for ISRIC, there are a few things that we discussed last time with Eduardo as well. Um, there are a few things there. For instance, they do have uh, first on a spatial resolution level uh, 250, one kilometer, uh, five kilometer aggregations. So you can choose from which source that you want to you want to get. A second thing that we need to be uh, careful about is uh, they do have an world aggregation like a world map, and they do have Africa map. For for instance, take uh, soil organic carbon. For soil organic carbon, you can find a map on a world map and an Africa map. And the value that you get for a specific GPS is not necessarily the same, depending on from what, uh, from what, from which batch that you source it. The reason is when they do the world, they used um, probably different covariates, different model that is optimized for, for world extrapolation than when they do that for Africa label. And to make things a bit more complicated, it is not all the variables that we can get from world or from Africa. You cannot choose to say, I will just go with Africa and you get all the variables. No, you cannot, you don't. I mean, they they might have, I, I can imagine they do have, but it is not all public. There is some variables are available for Africa and some not. So there is one um, a script Eduardo as well wrote. It, it is harvesting from from a web page, the web page of the ISRIC. Uh, uh, it is harvesting from there. I think it has five or six variables, uh, covariates, soil variables there for both depth, but that is the world one. And the challenge there was, but we, we solved it, right? Uh, we, we, it is 
now it is it can give the flat file as well for the gps but the way it is released is uh, the map is uh, put in in different tiles in different pieces the the whole map is just just cut in, in different triangles and squares different tiles and for uh, from every every tile you can define your coordinates uh, and and extract your data from that but you can also just download all the tiles as as a geotiff um, so those, for those ones the script is already there this one is not working like that this one has just the files so depending on what is what is best fits for AIA purpose we can go in any way right so um, here as well as I said you just uh, run that thing uh, the function and tada here you run this what you what I did is actually I just created a p a point with three uh, longitude and latitude a data frame and I told him go and read it from the the production server so you can see the data it gets the connection seems to be the distance between Belgium and Nairobi is long <laughs> yeah. so this is what you get for these three longitude and latitude, all the variables. Um, ah, yeah, there is still another thing. Okay, uh, for ISRIC data, I talked about the difference in resolution, the difference in uh, world and Africa. There is as well, uh, in most cases, especially for those Africa maps, they give data on 0 to 5 centimeter 5 to 10 15 15 to 30 30 to 60 like that for seven depths they give but when you go for instance to still for africa if you want the p olsen and the k uh, melic or exchangeable potassium or melic i don't when you want these variables you don't get them by by layer you only get them the top 30 centimeter so there are that kind of you see it here as well. Wherever there is, wherever there is 5, 15, 30 is showing this the top three layer. That is what we wanted in Akai for, for Akilimo. So wherever a variable with, with three depths is available, you see that one. But when you come here, starting from the K melic, exchangeable, potassium, P melic, total nitrogen. All these variables, when you see them, they don't have 5, 15, 30. They just have one, which is the 30. And that is why for every variable, I calculated the weighted average. Because at the end of the day, I don't have the different depths. I cannot do anything for different depths as I don't have for whole variable. I aggregated the rest as well to the top 30. And we do it that way. So. There are few things that need um, that need to be in that uh, data standardization to be documented very clearly and communicated to whoever is going to source the data from the CG labs using these things that they know what they are getting right. Uh, that is that is important. Some of the things I'm I'm just learning even even recent recently that recently that um, that is not all open is not all open um okay so this one is for for the isric data and i think the same logic goes to um, the same logic goes to the isda data Where is my killing more soils? There is it a wrapper or so what I did here, what I meant when I say that it is good, um, it is good to have a certain standardization in the way 
when we work, right? Uh, a, a certain agreement, especially in 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 a, in a co-developed development uh, environment, one takes the work of another. That we need to we need to understand each other how we how we work. So uh, this is the part that I was trying to say. In, for instance, in ISDA layers function, I do have all the functions. I do have the ISDA wrapper function. I do have the gate ISDA, gate ISDA depths two, and the gate ISDA depths one. ISDA, all that, all these functions are there. So these functions, unless you see a possibility of optimizing it, you don't need to go in here. You don't need to come here at all. For this will be for the developers to optimize, but assume you have a national staff that you give an assignment, get me the ISDA data for such and such country, they don't need to come here. What they need to is to, to develop this one. This one is more chaotic, not structured. And uh, wait, huh? yeah. What am I doing? Where am I actually? Why is that copied here? Hmm. OK, there are some things that are not correct here. Mm, that is the data. OK, let me get this one. Let me close this one. This one is only confusing us. So the gate is the data is the one that I'm talking. This is more chaotic, um, managed by the NRAs, and they just put whatever they want there, whatever they, they taste there and, and run it. If you see here, uh, is the data for a GPS? It say it is for a Lintool. It is gun I want. And if you go a bit down, okay, um, not the copy I have on my PC is of course there. Otherwise, you will see as well for Rwanda and Kenya, whatever, whatever below there. So this is more, more, more like that. That is one thing, and it is good if we do that for everything. For to run a Lintool, uh, BSAT, Quests, for all those things, if we have a function documented and written optimized and that something to something loose to play around and, and and get the data that will be that will be good so in the ISDA layers um there as well i wanted to have i wanted to have as i said the all the layers i can right because if i run it by api i'm firing one by one and it is tiresome for me <laughs> it is it takes long time to wait so I tried to get the data. The data is downloaded from the Zenodo. They do have almost all layers. Actually, they have all layers there that you can get it from from Isra. But the problem is uh, some of them, some of the files are corrupt. You cannot get these ones. You have to go by API. As, at least as far as as far as. Uh, I know recently as well, I tried to get those layers again, but those layers are, are, are the carbon organic, nitrogen total, phosphorus, texture class, uh, zinc. Zinc is not really mostly meaningful in, in the, it didn't come out really as a powerful information source there, like, but like pH and carbon and nitrogen, they are really, really key in the analytics we do. And those layers are corrupt. I mean, corrupt. Uh, when when you want to source the data, you get error. So for those ones, I'm going by API, but for all the rest, um, I'm going by from sourcing from the layers we have. Uh, and some things are just one layer, um, 0 to 20 and 20 to 50 they do have, but if you want land cover or crop cover or bedrock, uh, or the fertility compatibility, fertility compatibility classification, those things are one layer. So, so why we have many functions here is also partly that. Somebody say something? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just I wanted to understand on when you say sometimes you get like corrupt uh, data or information. So then what do you do? Or to uh, get information from other sites, or you just uh, extrapolate on what you would. No, I will source them by by API. When when the layer, the GOT file, when you download it, you get the GOT file. But when you ask it to read for a specific point, it is it doesn't give you anything. It gives you error. So which means when they process or when they 
when they put that GeoTIFF data in somewhere something went wrong. So in that way, you, I cannot use those GeoTIFF. I dropped those GeoTIFF files, but I will directly source the data via API. Probably there are, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, Joa or, or Eduardo, if you have a better way of doing that, I don't know. If there is any other experience, actually, I would like it that way that we, we discuss now, now, and not down if something needs to be optimized um, instead of just only copy paste from what is there in Akilimo into into CG labs. If we if somebody has a good idea, I do it this way and this is this seems better than how Akilimo has been doing it. We should note it down and we at once when we implement it within CG lab, we have a better combination of several things. So anyone has a better experience of a better way of sourcing is that data that will be nice to know now i make it can i comment on that sure please come to yeah okay i mean we I, actually i tried to mm. to access that i mean a few months ago and um well i think that was quite a challenge you know to get the 30 meter resolution product because these are really really heavy files um, so I basically, I mean, I could not download any of those data from anywhere in Africa that I tried it, uh, to be honest. And I mean, the alternative to that to actually source that data is um, Robert Iman's geodata package, uh, which of course, I guess, also includes many of the information that, uh, or many of the other data that you just mentioned in your, um, yeah, in your, uh, in your script there. So, I mean, the, the, I mean, I think the, the, the point of the, that Robert, at least as I understand it, the hassle that he had to, to go through it through to put it available was actually to just aggregate it to the same standard resolution for all the different data sets and, you know, to do some sort of pre-cleaning and then made it available to just our package that, I mean, with one line of code, you can just retrieve it, uh, yeah, the entire product or uh, and then manipulate it afterwards. So I, I don't know. I mean, I see you created your own fun functions to somehow do that. Which is also okay. I mean, I think there is nothing wrong with that. But I mean, just wanted to alert, and perhaps you are familiar with that. I, I, I don't, I don't know. But this geodata package could actually be a good source of information as well to build upon uh, as we move forward, basically. So yeah, just wanted to make this um, this point and happy to to yeah to answer any question if there are any in relation to this. Thank you. Thank you, Joa. Indeed, I, I know about the Robert Tayman's pack package as well, and I tried it. It works, it works like a charm. It's really nice. But the problem is with these corrupted files, it doesn't work. Mm. For these specific variables that are corrupted, it, it, it didn't work. And it, no. it is not the problem of the package or the script. It is just the data at the back end is not readable. OK. And so, I mean, what exactly do you mean with corrupt files, Meklit? Maybe the GOT files it. themselves, you know, the GOT files themselves have an issue. I don't know whether they do not have the right metadata behind it attached to them. Okay. But you can you can download them. You can have you have the GOT file, and then just like with with the raster extract of whatever any of the R packages, when you say read for longitude X and latitude Y. It it returns error. While it works for all the other the other files. So that's only for ISDA basically. Yeah, the ISDA and 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 basically I'm still sharing script right. Uh, share, sharing my screen right. Yes. Yeah. So basically these layers. These layers for aluminium extractable. You we one layer works fine. But I think it is the top zero to twenty centimeter works fine, but twenty to fifty not. For all the rest, bulk density and carbon organic, I have the layers. Both the two layers, for instance, for carbon organic, I do have, but I cannot get the data out. So there is something went wrong in the process of creating the geotype file for these ones. Well, but that's but then you cannot solve this problem, I guess. We need to contact ISDA to make that available, I suppose. Then Meklit, or uh... no? If you go by API, you still get data. Okay. Because okay. they do have API, right? So if you fire API, the the API is not reading from the layers they put here in Zonodo. Mm -hmm. 
Right, 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 right. Yeah, right, right. not reading here. So they, they do have the correct data, the correct layers, but the layers they put in Zonodo, which is you can download the whole thing there, yeah. that those geotips have an issue. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, sorry, mm. I can't go further on that because I mean, I think I just gave up to work with the 30 meter resolution map, so I just sort of went with solid grids ahead and sort of put is the to the on on the back, you know, but yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't tried the API, so I can comment on that. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah. yeah. It's nice to hear that, that at least the geotips are uh, are corrupt for some reason. Interesting. Anyway, yeah, you see, see this like one's up, Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like like for bulk density, uh, you see it in the FTP server. I'm showing it right. Yes, so for yes. ISDA data, we do have all of them. We, I I do have all the the 30 meter resolution Africa data for all the variables that you see here they are already here and this could be directly pulled and in in each file you do see two geotiffs yeah so the top this one is uh, 20 to 50 centimeters this one is 0 to 20 centimeter and i'm showing nitrogen total so i have the layers but these layers are not readable while if you go to pmel you know uh, like for instance cdc these files are readable with with R. Yeah. But I guess um, Eduardo, he he also uh, he has something with uh, Google Earth Engine or something. Eduardo, maybe can you comment on? I, I was going oh. to say that uh, my 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 <laughs> proposal was going to be to to fire one billion calls to ISDA, but but actually yes, we can probably try to to to. To access the the data from Google Earth Engine and just uh, make a local copy, I I I, I am a supporter of what of uh, of the approach of having uh, the local copy in the server uh, rather than re rely on on third party solutions. Uh, you know, like uh, Joao was saying that the geodata it's uh, available. I think it's uh, actually good when you have the the data locally stored. It, 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 yeah. yeah. But this, uh, of course, yeah. it depends on, you... on what we want to do. Exactly. When you do on a spatial scale, like thousands of uh, coordinates, um, it is much easier to <laughs> You can create the flexibility you need uh, yourself if you have the basis, the basis of the function. And anyway, these functions are are, are there. We can do, and 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 again, it is just for only for this for these layers. Maybe what we can do is if we can communicate with with ISDA that they will revise this, they will check the GOT files for these variables and and replace in in Zonado the. Uh, the, the the right the right geotif the workable geotifs we will we will download them because we have already the the layers huh? we do have all all the layers that we can get from ISDA they are here we have them so it is already downloaded the whole tif from ISDA for the whole Africa it is it is with an Akilimo server so we can pull all of this get a copy in CG Labs. And for those that are corrupted ones, maybe we can ask Matt or, or uh, I think if if I, I can send an I can send email and ask Matt if he can check these layers. That can be done. Yeah. The the question I have a question here at this point, uh, Meklit. Sorry. Yeah. The. The, so of course, uh, there are going to be use cases located outside of Africa. And uh, do we follow? I, I, we have no other choice but to follow a different approach uh, with those. And, and, and for Aquilimo, which one is the preferred data source? Is it ISDA or is it uh, ISRIC? We're, we're taking mainly from ISDA since ISDA before. We were there before ISDA released this data, then we were using ISRIC, but once we get the ISDA data, because the ISDA data, the benefit of it is that they consumed 
the data from ISRIC and they added a lot of ground truth data that from like Ethiopia's Ruasi's thing, the initiative after the ISRIC uh, uh, data revolution, they they still went country by country. There were in, there was initiative in 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 improving the ISRIC data with more more real data. They did they took that and. If you see the documentation, they also added some satellite imagery, they say, uh, for soil properties, I guess, and they they try to improve on, on ISRIC data. And when we do, when we do, but at the end of the day, they're not really hugely different. Um, but there are locations because these additional soil data also are not like uniformly distributed all over. Some of them come from very concentrated region. So for those regions, indeed, the ISDA data will be improved than the ISRIC data. But some areas are still hugely like uh, <laughs> kilometers away extrapolation. And, and, and yeah, so we put both at the end of the day. It is good to put both ISRIC and ISDA uh, and let um, use cases source what they want for what is fitting for their for their area. Because there are also countries that didn't do much more, didn't really add much more ground truth data. Uh, I saw, for instance, the Ethiopia mob in, in Ethiopia. There are regions that you would definitely say, "I want, I want the ISDA data." Uh, although there as well, there is uh, still a huge discussion. They are not; they did not even completely release it for public because there are issues of um, different laboratories and so on. So people are not absolutely comfortable. <laughs> Comfortable. I mean, just to say that a more data doesn't always also mean that a better a better ground truth data. So that is why it is. And besides, in addition to that, there are variables that are in is done not in ISRIC and vice versa as well. So it is good to have that both of them uh, made it available for anyone. The layers are also this one is 0 to 20 and then 20 to 50, while the ISRI goes in different depths uh, range. Um, yeah. And for your question, what do we do then, like for Southeast Asia or Latin America or, or like that? I think we need to, the approach could be the same. And that will be always better to have one approach. So if they do have uh, a digital soil map, layers from somewhere that they are sourcing, maybe uh, just expand, get their layers as well in the CG lab and, and develop further, um, ex expand this, this script as further to do in the same way. And then add a variable to define it for their region, yeah. At least I would do it that way. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm saying only what I think, uh, but uh, I, I, I'm not saying this is the best way. Huh? I know, I agree, I agree. I think it's uh, best to, yeah, well, it's to keep it flexible. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, mm. of course it, it, it's it's usually more work because then you have to re re standardize, but then it also allows to you know to incorporate more. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Think Meda. Uh, I think Meklit cannot see your hand. No, I, can I just um, I, I'm a little worried that we're getting into the weeds quite a bit here. Um, and and while this discussion is really important at some level, I, I'm wondering if we should step out and see what Akilimo, you know, what, what this is a soils uh, module that we've been discussing for quite some time. Uh, is it worth it, Meklit, to sort of step out of this and sort of give us a a bit more view of of the of the other pieces of it, or am I in the minority? Ignore me if it's not worth it. But I'm just wondering if uh, because it's now 4:20 yeah. my time. I'm just yeah. worried that yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No. Um. No. You are you are right. We will we will go. But for the developers that are going to work with this thing, put it uh, an EIA functionality. These discussions are are important. 
but for the for the to to capture the general thing, probably we don't need to go into this depth. So how do we how do we actually this is a good point then even to discuss that. Um, today, let me just with the rest of the re the remaining uh, minutes, let me just go on the general thing. But um, this is already discussed with Eduardo in depth. And this needs to be implemented first in CG Labs to go to the next step of implementing the script to start running, checking, optimizing, right? Um, and, 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 and there we even need to go a bit more hands on, a bit more practical, a uh, bit more into nitty gritties. So probably we could use the next sessions to do that one. And today I can come out to the surface again and, and show the modules. What do you prefer? Uh, I just wanted to make the comment, uh, make it that um, uh, for me, why this has been useful is that it uh, talks to the question of how scalable uh, is the Akilimo platform um, and the scalability is, is obviously directly related to our ability to to get credible information from you know in new places and I'm assuming that the scripts that we have shown and all the different functionality then forms the basis of a uh, quick validations that would need to be done in new countries uh, with new crops and then would we'll be able to to basically offer the service. But at least this part of it seems to be well thought out, well constructed and fairly robust enough for us to have the confidence that we can do it uh, in other countries. So on, on that score alone, I think for me this has been this has been very helpful as the least um, uh, technical person on the call. So thanks. <laughs> The last sentence we will delete for the rest we accept. <laughs> uh, yeah, ideally, you know what I would like that uh, this thing is by bits and pieces will be implemented really uh, now in these weeks and the coming weeks as well in CG Labs. And those people who are going to be um, responsible or who are, who are going to be the contact person in, in running this, this script is, We'll already pick a country. At this point, it is in Africa. It works. Pick a country and and run and and have that thing in their own system. That okay, this thing is working fine, and this one is not. So that is a problem. That kind of really really hands on that I want in the coming weeks. But maybe for today, I will come out and and go on with the with the story of Akilimo. Is that okay? Maybe if I may add uh, also uh, to define the, or, or whoever is interested to kind of like also maybe we can organize a, a space where we can all have access uh, and uh, you know and ensure that uh, that everyone is able to to run the scripts and work yeah. together. But I agree with uh, that everyone should be able to do it on their own and follow the the steps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so. What I suggest is that on CG Labs we will. I I, I am trying mainly to create that space, that uh, yeah. co collaborative space, but it's not yet uh, implemented in the existing uh, server. So yeah. Yeah. I hope in the coming days it's uh, ready. Yeah. I think that is ra rather at the high priority. We need to have that and copy all the data that we want there. Scrape this and we work there. Yeah. That is good. OK, so uh, is it 430 or is, is it you five o'clock? Oh. We have time until what? <laughs> we still have, we have, we have another, another 35 minutes, make it. OK, that is good. <laughs> Can I just make a comment or ask a question? Please do, Joe. Um, so I think the, the way I see it and based on the um, on the discussions and seeing the scripts and all that, I think there are different levels, right? That, that I think we can we can focus the work on. 
I mean, the first one is, of course, run it to, I mean, run the platform or the, the, the set of scripts that you have for different contexts. And I think that makes sense, especially if you are working in a use case where this has not been applied yet. And that provides a very concrete application of what is already there. So I think that's the first sort of layer that I see. Yeah. The second one would be on really improving the scripts and the codes that you already have. I mean, making them more efficient, adding more data, whatever, you know, I think this is really working on the on the script and then the programming itself. And then the third layer perhaps is on the data and how actually you link data sets and new data sets that might be coming in to refine what you already have there, basically. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I don't know, I think having the full overview today, at least for me, it would help. But as we go forward, I think it would be good to really differentiate these three things because I think they entail yeah. very different expertise yeah. and they are actually very different tasks, to be honest. So I don't yeah. know how to structure that as we as as, as we move on. Eh? But at least to me, yeah. I think it would be useful to to make the separation, perhaps. And of course, as as we get use cases involved and uh, and all that, perhaps things also will get much clearer. Yeah. But um, but I don't know. I I, th I thought it was just important to to share that, you know, and to see at least these three yeah. different levels that that, that that we talk about, they all fit into this framework, basically, but they entail yeah. very different tasks and expertise, I think. Yeah, no, definitely. You're it is it is absolutely sure. That was the next point actually I was I was going to raise that in in expansion there are areas or variables that we didn't take into consideration. For instance, the digital elevation model, which will be if we were working in Ethiopia, Akilimo needs to have that. For Nigeria and Tanzania, the area we work, it is quite flat, it wasn't necessary. So like digital elevation model, soil moisture. If any anybody, any technical person within Transform has scripts and data sources, we need to bring in this, this variable and, and create it in the way that it all comes as a flat file together, right? So that is one area that we need to discuss. And for this, we need, we need technical people. And um, another area is uh, functionality itself. Uh, we are running the water limited yield by by lean tool, but we we, ha we had a DSAT output as well, but we contracted the University of Florida to run for us and they run it on Hypergator, super efficient for the last 20 or 25 years for about 20,000 data points. They did that, but Annie said that they do have a highly optimized DSAT running capability. So that also need to come in as, as an alternative for the, the lean tool and if there is any other any other models as well. So that one requires not only a technical person, but the, the crop models as well to bring it. And, and the lean tool function I have is working only on Plazava. And that, that, I mean, it is, as long as somebody has the crop parameters, it is easier to tune it, to change it into another, another, another crop thing, but that functionality also needs to be built. That is that also needs. So it is true. We need different labels. So my idea of going ahead is that when we pick the first thing, indeed implementing this, start start sourcing the data we can. The next thing we have to do is we need to identify who are the capable people that will help us expand the variable space, the digital elevation model and, and, and the soil moisture, whatever I say. There we need like, OK, assign X, Y, Z. We'll work on this thing. And next week they will come with a working function. And someone who is centrally putting standardizing, you need to have two, three people centrally making all the components coming from different people fit into one prediction engine. Call it Akilimo, call it whatever you want. It is better even to call it something else. So in that EIA, in the EIA system. So you need to have that. You need to have people, modelers, that will work on uh, modelers and, and technical people on the DSAR part. Like that, we have to we have to go on. As the step we are in, we might need different sets of people. But for for now, let me just use the remaining 30 minutes to go to go the general overview. Sounds good. OK, um, so we, we saw the, the soils, the same logic, huh? the same logic 
we go, uh, we get the NASA data as well. So at this point with the Nakilimo, we have the soils, we have the NASA, we have the rainfall data. These are, these are the functionalities that we get. And at the end of the day, you can just imagine a data file for every GPS location for one specific location. You do have all those variables coming together. At this point, I do have three data sets coming together. I don't, I didn't merge them into one big flat file because what I need for Quest is, doesn't take into account maybe the rainfall data, but it, it only needs the water limited yield that I get from the lean tool output, that kind of thing. Okay. So we reach there. Wait, and maybe if I go back here. Um, so once we get all the data, let's assume we are on that level. We have all the input data that 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 we get, right? Um, so in general, it is first uh, determining the yield gap. And after that, what 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 kind of yield increase do we want and what what nutrient is required to go from the current yield into X level? That is that is a general thing. But in defining the yield gap, the first thing with an Akilimo concept we do is what is actually we we identify two things. The first thing is on our trial sites, what is going on, whatever model we mm, uh, train in the trial sites, then you take it to the to the area of interest or to the farmer's field, right? So in doing so, we call it here reverse quests. We call it here, this is what we run. The reverse quests is what we run. And what it is doing is it, it estimates the indigenous nutrient supply of NPK from NOT yield data. That is what it is doing. Quests go. Uh, in both ways, it can go from yield through nutrient uptake. It can go to supply. It can't. It can tell you how much nutrient supply was there to see the yield you measured in your trial sites, or you can completely reverse it, saying if you tell it the supply through uptake based on uh, crop specific parameters, tuning it for a specific crop, it comes. It comes back to yield. So the path that, uh, that we are using in the reverse quests is in our trial sites, we do have measured yield for nutrient omissions, uh, the full NPK, and then the three omissions, uh, control, we do have half NPK as well. Uh, this one is for cassava with an Akai, but in a scaling Akilimo project for Rwanda, we didn't do strictly in, in OT, in nutrient omission trials. What we tested is rather different packages, and these different packages, none. Of them, I think none of them was even control. None of them is control, because for potato, nobody sows his crop for with zero fertilizer. So there, our control was the blanket recommendation that they were getting, and after that, we designed different different packages, and those packages went to be tested. We measured the yield for that. So the same logic we can use as long as we, we do have different treatments and the orthogonality is the one that matters. The difference between your, your the, the difference in performance from your different packages, different treatments should be substantially different. The nutrient composition should be substantially different from each other. That will help you to get, you, you put it uh, here, there is, here there is a, a certain formula that you see here that is optimized for. I think it is all plucked together here that you don't see it well, <laughs> but uh, these are rather. Maybe here you see it. These are three different, three different equations that that helps you. So now as well, let me let me zoom out with with this one. What we do is we do have our in nutrient omission data or any different package test data. We take that one. And uh, at least for Akai, it worked well for us well that we run linear mixed effects model. Therefore, we can capture only structured variability or we can significantly reduce random noise in the data. So we get the blobs from the, 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 the linear mixed effects model. And these are the, the blobs or the ones with the structured variability. Those ones, the ones that we take further in the analytics. 
So we fitted Quefts, we put this data, this yield data in the in, in the Quefts, and here you have the functions. How to run this thing is you do have the function here. So you, you don't need to bother. For Quefts in the regional agronomy, uh, Robert and uh, uh, our friend uh, Jordan, they work together and they, there is a quest uh, package as well there, which is which is which is working beautifully, but it doesn't allow for us to kind of uh, split and come as at the step that we want to come in with in quests that we get the result that we want. So for that reason, this actually this quests function come from Jordan, but it was developed by someone from Wageningen University. I guess in the team of Ken Giller, Ken Giller and Thomas Schutt or something like that. We we are using these quests where small small components come together, like the the maximum yield, the um, the crop parameters, uh, if you see it here, these CMAX routes, these are all crop parameters. You can change them for any crop you want. Uh, you can you can do that. Um, so, right. Uh, this is the function. And then. Here. This is how this is how we are running it. Actually, it is Alka. It is the Rwanda data as an example that is put here. Uh, if if Rwanda the scaling Akilimo project uh, data that if there is a problem, I can replace it with Alka data. If that data should not be shared, um, so this one is the function that that runs. Um, so someone can go through it. We can go together through it when we are on that technical level to run it. But what we are getting from this function is that at the end of the day, for every trial location, we will get the soil N, P, and K, assuming a zero input. That is what we are go going to get. So now that we know the, um, the soil N, P, K for this location, when we think of a farmer location, on a farmer location, we don't have yield, we don't know their yield, we don't have uh, what kind of input they are putting. We don't know. So on both ends of quests, you need to have the yield or the supply, the nutrient supply. We don't have both. So what we do is, what we have on farmers' field is all the geospatial data, right? So using the geospatial data, we have to be able to tell what is the soil NPK level on the farmers' field. And that what we, how we are doing that is, we train a model. Mm, let me go back here. We, we, we train a model with random forest model. Here, this is what we are going to do. On our location, we do have already the soil nutrient supply and the soil nutrient supply, we will feed a random forest model with the geospatial data on our trial location. Once this model is trained, it will be used on a farmer's field because there we have the geospatial data. Therefore, we will be able to know the soil nutrient supply on the farmer's field. This is what the reverse quests plus the random forest model is helping us. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm, I am clear. <laughs> so we do have the reverse quest. The reverse quest helps us on our trial location to go from yield to estimating soil and uh, the soil nutrient. While being still on our trial, we relate the soil NPK that we get from the reverse quests to the geospatial data. And that model we will use to predict the soil NPK on farmer's field, taking the geospatial data on farmer's field, which when we generate all those um, coordinates, the regular grid coordinates, and take all the geospatial data, that is the use of it to be fit. And then we do have, for every GPS location, the soil NPK. So, are we okay? <laughs> are we okay about the reverse quest and, and the random forest model is also here. The random forest model as well tries to explain what it is supposed to do in general, and then, um, 
the variables at this point the random forest model is using as you see it is uh, the ISDA data mainly it is using and we do have a control the a control level the control level is not in absolute term it is not that on a farmer's field we know he's going he's getting eight ton or or ten ton it is not like that it is in terms of classes is it between like 7 and 12 ton and 12 and 18 ton large enough that they will they can be they can the farmers can relate to to tell us uh, and these classes are the ones that are put in in the random forest model um how are we doing any question or I, I just uh, wanted to know with the, the um, your, your reverse safe uh, uh, thing that you're talking about and how have you validated and tested it some of us you know like uptake of nutrients they do depend on a number of things so it's not like it's a straight line uh that you've got n or p and k and equals to uptake by crop there are other uh, factors involved so does the reverse and forward give you the same and have you validated this with some yeah code? yeah no you are you are right i mean uptake and supply it's not a, a, a really that's why we are using quests because Quefts has these crop parameters and fertilizer extraction factors that that bring us in the, the the soil properties are coming, the crop parameters are coming, and it is limiting. Um, it is a lot more sophisticated than, for instance, fitting your response curve, because it is when it estimates the response to a certain nutrient, the low of minimum is also there. It is comparing the being limited if can it be limited on this location by k or by p not just in the nutrient response alone and then it bound it ha, it also has an, an upper boundary on that location for the water limited yield so all these functions are coming together within quests that's why we choose to work with uh, crop models and not um, not 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 uh, empirical models here so if you see for instance for the akai data what you see here is the validation on the x axis for a control treatment on our nutrient omission trial in Nigeria and Tanzania. What we are getting is on the x treatment for the control and for the half NPK treatment on the y. This is yield your C. On the x axis, on the y axis, what you see is what we did is on these locations, first we estimated the soil nitrogen for NPK using the reverse quests, which means it is the NPK level given cassava growing and showing that response in that location. And if I have zero additional fertilizer input, that is the NPK level the soil has. That is what we estimated from the reverse quests, right? So second step, you will go and say, again, within quest, you say, okay, if I have Soil N50 uh, and uh, P20 and K10, assuming that is what we estimated. With this combination of NPK, what will be the what has to be the control yield in this location? And that estimation yield is what you see on the y-axis. And the relationship, as you see it, both for a control and for a half NPK is working very well. So which means within you you can comfortably assume. The soil NPK you estimated in your trial location using quefts and the responses that you saw is working very well. And after that, probably it is not and it is okay, it is not presented here. No, it is, it is also here. So the next step, as I said, is the random forest model. On the random forest model, now I am comfortable with the soil NPK estimate. The relationship is being able to estimate the soil NPK as a response to the geospatial data and their derivatives, all of them together. How is it working? So the first thing we saw was in best case, in best case, it is 0 0.4, R square 0 0.4 that we saw, which is not really very comforting, right? 
That is why I said as well that a soil data or this the geospatial data, whether you go on 250 or five kilometer, you're not going really going to see a huge deal, a huge, huge, huge jump of improvement you're not going to see there. Mainly because there is a lot of extrapolation, large area are smoothened out. They get similar value, even if in reality there are differences. So that that the, the scale or the resolution we are in now is not the available data behind these digital soil maps, is not detailed enough, doesn't help to capture a local level variability. So we get 0.4. And we added the control yield. The control yield, as I told you, is not specific, but um, classes, discretized. The moment you do that, because at the end of the day, if you think of it on a specific location, it is not the end you want to know. It is not the P, it is not only the rainfall, it is not this. It is a combination of all factors, including management. It boils down to yield. If you know the yield, you know how all the other things are together. You will not be able to tell. That factor is this way or that way, but the combination of it, the effect of it, you will know. So the moment we add those five classes, we created five classes, a very poor, what is rather, you know, standardish thing, and then a better average, a reasonably well, good and really high yield level, these classes. And these classes, where do they come from? From the observation you have in that area, if it is a soya bean, if you have a soya bean data from your database, as much as possible you have, you collect them, and you see how the control yield in what kind of classes you can reasonably, you can reasonably cut them and then discretize them, right? The moment we add a control yield, the R square goes to 0 0.9 for, for nitrogen. Uh, K is rather, you can, you can, it is, it almost always gives us a feeling like response to K is not really hugely different. It, it even makes you wonder if, if there is a serious K issue in African soils. It seems African soils have less problem with K, but N is like a major one, and you see a major uh, improvement as well. With P reasonable, with K not much response to K is also not that much variable, uh, at least within within cassava and maize, I have seen that one. So yeah, if you, uh, for your question, a long answer for your question, did we validate it? Yes, we did, both in using the reverse quaftus and then in using the random forest models as well. And this, uh, this the same kind of application, we try to extrapolate it. In maize, we tested it, it is working. Um, in, in, in Kenya data, we saw a very satisfying result. In, in um, the potato data in uh, the cassava is okay, but the potato data in um, Rwanda, it needed a modification there. There, that's why, you know, sometimes as well, I, I will have to tell that it is not like because it works uh, nicely within cassava, we cannot just uh, package it and release it like the way uh, a mathematical uh, software is working. It won't, it, you won't reach uh, a way uh, SPSS is doing. Or, um, what I mean is like, not like you cannot standardize to the level WhatsApp is working. Because there are certain data nature uh, combined with the natural factors that you need to really not make it a black box, but sometimes you need to question some of the steps, some of the models interrogate them very well. So I don't know if I answer your question. Was that Vimbai or was that Patricia? <laughs> oh, it was Patricia, I think. OK, yeah. Uh, did I answer <laughs> my question? Yeah, yeah OK. And otherwise, I think it's, uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. And otherwise, when we when we implemented, you could you could uh, put it to test to your data set in your area and and see what modification is required as well. Yeah. Um, so where are we now? We are now on random forest model. We are we are we're we're on this level, right? So we went already away from. Um. So I think Mechlet, you have a couple of questions from Vimbai and then from Elka. 
Okay, I don't see I don't see hand, so <laughs> Madam moderate, please. <laughs> okay, uh, Method, I think my question relates to what you were explaining, especially towards the end, um, when you're talking about the responses across the three nutrients, your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, my question is more of like so in terms of um the random forest and the quests, is it more of like uh, a disaggregated um, validation and um, I don't know, uh, is it you then at the end of the day uh, working on the different uh, nutrients separately and then aggregating them towards the end to come up with um, a yield estimate or it's more of a um, like combined um, estimate of the yield based on your NPK. I don't know if I'm making sense there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. You are. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All so right. If you see, if you see this function, right? Yeah. What What it is saying is what I wanted to know is for a specific location, the N okay. soil, the P soil, and the K soil, right? Mm -hmm. That is my 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 question, and what the the available nutrient for my crop is how much fertilizer I added multiplied by the recovery fraction because not all the nutrients that you apply is available for the crop, right? It is a fraction of that. A certain fraction of that is available for your soil. So that one you look at and then how much was there in the soil. The sum of these things will give you the available nutrient for your crop at a location, right? So when when are we OK still? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. OK. So when you translate that one, we then, uh, as, as a mathematical function, we do have, uh, still at one location, we do have a yield for here a K omission, and P yield is K omission, right? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll display it like that. Oh. Okay. So the N P yield is the K omission is a function of whatever soil, whatever nitrogen I had with the soil, plus whatever I added by recovery fraction, for P the same, what is what was there and what was added, but for K I didn't add anything. It's only K soil. And the same you can do for a P omission and the N omission. These are still three equations being written based on three yields that you observe on a location plus the water limited yield, plus the ceiling of your yield you get. And this function in our case will become the Queftus function. And within the Queftus function, when it estimates the K soil here, for instance, so you do have three unknowns at this point, the three unknowns and three equations. These three equations need to be solved simultaneously. And we do have a cost function. And our cost function is minimizing the sum of square error. The residual sum of square error should be minimized. So what it is doing is when it estimates the nitrogen amount on that location, it is taking simultaneously how much P, how much K can you have? Therefore, you will be able to see that yield within the limit of being lower than the water limit yield. So that is why it brings the all the factors together that it is not individually nutrient by nutrient you do an aggregate. No, when you estimate for one nutrient, you are taking into account the availability of the other nutrients as well. So it is optimized that way. It is all coming together. I don't know if I am clear. <laughs> and on, on, on a later stage, when we start, um, when we, when you look at into the script itself and, and run it, that will also help. <laughs> but this is like in a nutshell what is what is happening. No, it's OK. Uh, I think I must have uh, glazed over these equations when you were um, on the slide. Yeah, I, I I didn't go in detail. I just brushed them off as well. But yeah, that is all right. That is all right. Thanks for it. OK, yeah. OK. Uh, who else had a question? Alka, Alka had a question. Yeah, yes, Meklit, um, thanks. Um, I mean, you know this method, but maybe just for the others, uh, um, my comment is about the random forest model. So you explained how the NPK soil supply is related to the soil 
well, there is a model established between the NPK supply of the soil and then the digital soil data from ISRIC and then the control yield level, right? But in the Rwanda use case, we are really interested to bring in other variables yeah. in that um, process that, that can explain more like the field to field variation, uh, especially because, you know, with the topography in Rwanda, we have such huge variation between fields in the same location. Uh, so we're thinking of bringing in other variables like slope, like organic matter uh, or organic nutrient management and so on. Um, so I guess that will be really interesting for future versions. That's yeah. that's the point I wanted to make. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, if uh, what is done uh, here? Yeah, that is as well what I hear. The list of all the variables that we are considering co currently, they are there. Um, but that's why as well I, I suggested when we are uh, first creating that common space to work with and all the digital soils, the geospatial data that we need for the modeling is put there. At this point, as we are not covering um, digital elevation models, uh, soil moisture, um, anything actually, anything relevant that one one tested and, and is confident, even if it is not tested, if you come up with an idea of this variable should also be there, we could put it. If it is not useful, the model itself will tell us that is, it doesn't have really a predictive value, but we need to put all those things together and add. And on top of that, um, Alta also had an idea to 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 look into the organic matter because uh, organic organic fertilizer applications, because most farmers use a certain level of organic matter uh, in Rwanda, and and accounting for that will be it definitely makes a difference if they use a good quality in a good proportion. That definitely. If missing out that one, we make us recommend more than the more than necessary in organic fertilizer. So it is a additional cost that we are putting, unnecessary cost. So yeah, definitely, it is good you you raised it that it it immediately puts it uh, puts it why we need to expand the data sources at the implementation phase now. Yeah. Anyone with a uh, question? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, so we are now at, at a random forest model. We reach there. At, at this point, then what we get at the end of the day is for, uh, for all 12,000 or whatever, um, for a country like Rwanda, it is a smallish so you might, you might have just a maximum 2,000, I don't know, 4,000 data points. For each one of them, in to on top of all the geospatial data, we will have as well the soil and the soil P, soil K, the estimated these values. But indeed, the step that we jump is in the reverse quest, when we do the quests, we were talking about already the water limited yield. And for the water limited yield, at this point, we are using the, the lean tool version. So the lean tool as well, I don't know if it exists actually. I have no knowledge of uh, if there is a package, another package to run it, or it, I don't know, like quests, I don't know. But we do have uh, the special functions for lean tool that are really just like the quests function. We do have the components, we do have the bits and pieces of functions together. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it runs spatially. We can run it um, spatially. And what we, we do is, normally what we do is, if it was possible, it is good to run it for the last 20 or, or at least 10 years for because it is the rainfall data that gets uh, from the back end, right? It, get, it gets the rainfall data and the hydraulics data as well. That is part of the lean tool needed for the lean tool scripts. So we should run it for 20, 10, um, 30 years if possible. Therefore, we will be able to know at a location only due to um, the availability of the rainfall distribution, 
how much variation is there even on the potential yield, over, even on the water limited yield, because water limited yield doesn't take into account a limitation on nutrients. It assumes there is a perfectly balanced nutrient, but only water limits the soil, right? But running for plus 12,000 pointers for 20 years, that is eternity. It takes eternity. So what, what the, the, the thing we chose is to run it for three years. So we look at into the rainfall distribution of an area for the last, I think, 25 years we look at it and we choose a year that is considered like a moderate, like a, a normal year, a median kind of year and the two quartiles. These are the three years we identify for every country and then we run the lintul then three times. We will have for every location three water limit, limited yield areas that are not highly variable. They will have very close water limited yield and otherwise uh, a large variation is, is seen. Um, but ideally, ideally, at least, you know, you always improve. <laughs> ideally, now when we implement it for EIA, we have to go into the probabilistic approach, not defining um, the, the median and the, 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 the two quartiles, but um we have to go into the the, the rainfall it, it is yeah <laughs> it's, it's still not completely ripe in my head but i see a value in defining uh not years specifically but for that location because the mm -hmm. the problem with this approach is a median location a median rainfall level for the majority, for uh, say for 75% of your location, probably is not really the median year for the other 25%. So there are there is already a certain level of you know the the logic already breaks a little bit there. But what if we what if we do for every location, look at the rainfall distribution and say the 75 Pro, uh, the, the rainfall amount in which this location gets in 75% of the time uh, like that, then we are detached from the year, but we will compose our own rainfall data that we say it is a 75.75 uh, probability for all location. Then we come out of the year we did, did, because uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> we drop years. And for every location, look at the 25 year years data uh, distribution, rainfall data distribution and get different probabilities. Like an average probability is what, what is for this location will be completely from, from, from the other location and that way we will improve. So that's what we need to do. I didn't see the time, sorry. We will start the water limited yield next session. See you next time. <laughs>